we are focusing on Indian geography. Uh, in this lecture, we are focusing on river system in India. But uh, what I would like that first I should draw map of India, and uh, this is in actually we are uh, focusing with physical features also here, uh, not in detail, but they are mainly required for our river system understanding process. So uh, I want to draw this uh, map and uh, what is my suggestion that uh, you should also try to draw along with me. Uh, now why we are focusing on the river system or physical geography of India? It is no doubt we are focusing on India, but uh, we have to discuss about Pakistan, about Bangladesh, about Nepal, Bhutan, even Tibet, that is the part of China now, but we have to discuss that also. And so, uh, in short, we are talking of Indian subcontinent. So, I am focusing here on India, but other nations, because uh, say, uh, rivers, they are having origin in different nations. And so, we are taking references of that. So, our map that is inclusive of map of India, Pakistan, parts of Afghanistan, China and Bangladesh etc. Uh, <clears throat> you can also start drawing with me. I am first drawing uh, here that is the Gujarat part that is the peninsula of Gujarat. This is Dwarka here at this place, run of Kachal, then there is Rajasthan part, Punjab, Kashmir territory. Keep in mind, uh, this map is not drawn according to scale. This map is just for getting us the idea. So it is not perfect and uh, I hope you are drawing map, uh, don't use stencils for drawing map because like that when we are drawing, our concepts will become more clear. Now this peninsula I have to change like this, this line I have to follow, that is almost coastal line of India. From here, I have to start part Pakistan, then this is Balochistan part. Here, somewhere, I have to say this is Bangladesh. Now, this is Arabian Peninsula part. Now general mountain ranges, I am starting from here. This is all we are calling Himalaya. But practically from Pakistan territory, we have Kirthar range, Suleiman range, then in Afghanistan, Pariyatra mountain, that is Hindu Kush range, then Kashmir, where ranges are there, and uh, then we are calling Himalaya, that is from uh, Himachal onwards, Himachal, Uttaranchal, Nepal. Then here we are calling this territory as Purvanchal. And even what Andaman Nicobar Islands are there. These Andaman Nicobar Islands, they are also parts of Himalayan range. You are aware that Himalaya 
is there in total three rays. Suppose I am travelling in this direction. Try to be correct. We discuss this topic that this is the plane of U B here. Then Shivali mountain range, core part of Himalay, greater Himalay, a small plateau that is river Sangpo basin, and then there is Kailas range, and then there is plateau of Tibet. This is also bend here, and which ends out there in China at Kunlun Shan mountain range. So, revising, this is. Shivalik, Kor Himalay, Greater Himalay, and Kailas. So if I have to draw here, this is something like that. Shivalik, Kor Himalay, Greater Himalay. Next line here, that is the Kailas range. Then there is plateau of Tibet, and here somewhere end is there. That is here, means this slope. This mountain is Kundun Shan mountain range. So this is about. A general idea about Himalay, where Greater Himalay is having average height of 6,000 meter. You are aware that above 5,000 meter height from sea level, there is absolutely, uh, say, oxygen amount is less. Usually, trees are not found above that line, and uh, it is very difficult to cross out that line. And that's why Himalaya gives us protection from north side. Now, that is the range. That whatever rainfall is there from this part, whatever winds are there, they are stopped by Himalaya. And heavy rainfall or snowfall is there in this range. So, Himalaya range is peculiar about its snowfall. Tremendous ice is accumulated over there. And in summer also, Certain parts are there where ice is not melting. They are in summer, they are totally ice covered. Especially in greater Himalay, you will get that region where it is completely snow covered or ice covered. Glaciers are still there. But in lower parts of Himalay, there is melting of ice. Now, we are focusing on other parts of India. Here we will get a range, this is Arauli mountain range, here Gir mountain range, then here we are calling this as Western Ghat, here we are calling as Eastern Ghat, but Eastern Ghat is not continuous, it is divided and a comparatively of small height, then we are calling this as Sakura range, then Vindhya mountain range, here Chota Nagpur uh, Plateau and Rajmahal Hills and this is all Urvanchal region. So major mountain ranges are here. Now here you will find uh, this part that is North Indian plain and again small height is there. So some plateau is there between the here height is more, here height is less. Why I am saying that altitude wise? that higher altitude or lower altitude, height is more or height is less. That is to explain river system, the natural flow. Now if you are observing this Indian plateau, that is a peninsular region, you will get this type of diagram. This is coastal part, this is the western ghat which is having more height at west part. This direction is west, this is east. Then the slope here is comparatively less, here more slope, here less. And then this part plateau, and then it is eastern Ghat, and then this coastal region. Now look at diagram particularly, you will get the coastal part here is less, and here it is wide. So comparatively wider coastal plane uh, uh, is found on eastern parts of India. And so, but natural, the rivers are flowing, originating over here, then it flow towards east direction. Now here, we are having this idea. So, suppose I want to tell here, this is mountain range all. Then this region is plain, where I am moving the height, that region is plain. Plain is usually having height or altitude, that is ranging from 0 
to around 250 meter to 300 meter. If 300 meter plus, we are not calling that as plain. Generally, then this part is plateau. This is North Indian plateau. This is South Indian plateau. This is called as particularly Deccan Tract, which is made up of basalt rock. Now, uh, we are focusing on the river systems in India. River systems are divided basically into two. The one rivers originating in Himalaya and other other than Himalaya. So we are considering now rivers originating in Himalaya. Keep in mind Himalaya or beyond Himalaya. But geographically this is all single mountain range. So layers are there, parts are there. Hmm. Now Himalaya mountain range is comparatively newer mountain, younger mountain. Still developments are going on. And therefore, the landform changes are observed in Himalaya region. Now the rivers originating in Himalaya, they are older or ancient rivers than what we are having land today. So, uh, what is the important characteristic? That rivers were having existence, existence first and then the Himalaya land is formed. Himalaya mountain range that is formed over there and therefore we are getting a different structure of these rivers. The path of the river is changing. I try to recollect in history we discuss about that uh, in case of Mohenjo-Daro and Harappa. Uh, one of the cause of destruction of the civilization that was uh, the change of